Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're staying well and staying at home as much as you possibly can. Um, my heart really goes out to all the first responders and um, people that their job is outside of the home. My husband is included in that because he delivers fuel. So I'm just really appreciative of all the people that are still out doing what they need to do so that the rest of us can be safe and be at home and we don't have to leave. And so today I wanted to touch on a little bit about the lockdown. <laughs> We are on quarantine, self-quarantine, self-isolation, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so there is, <laughs> in my mind, I can't help but feel like some of my other experiences sort of prepped me for this because I've been on a lot of lockdowns. I mean, I've been in jail, I've been to rehab, and I've been in the psych ward, all of which were... Um, I can't help but notice some similarities between those days and this quarantine. I'm just going to call it quarantine and this quarantine that we're on now. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. I'm a recovering addict and here I like to share things I've learned throughout my sobriety and my recovery. I've struggled. I was addicted to multiple substances and my addiction lasted for 14 years and I've been clean and sober off hard drugs since 2012. Alcohol soon followed a year or so later. So welcome. And I know that this is a very eerie time for a lot of people or I guess surreal would be a good way to put it because we're so used to going, going, going and being able to go anywhere and um, not have to worry about basically the coronavirus, which is scary because you can't see it. And so it's like the things that they're telling you to prepare for it, like wash your hands. It almost doesn't seem like enough. Um, and to stay home, it's like, I'm, I'm the type of person that I always like to be extra, um, like prepared and I just feel like <laughs> staying home and washing my hands, it doesn't feel like enough, you know? So that's the hardest part right now for me is feeling like I wish there was something that I could do to help more. And um, so this video, I'm just going to keep it really sweet and short. I'm not going to bore you with all the similarities between jail, psych ward, um, the quarantine that I'm on now. I just want to pull out a few nuggets that helped me a lot when I was on lockdown. Um, so when I was locked up, and when I say locked up, I could mean any of those three. Like I went in the psych ward. I wasn't, I didn't go in the psych ward because I wanted to be in the psych ward. I ended up in the psych ward because I overdosed. And when you overdose, you end up in the psych ward. At least I did in that state because they think you are a danger to yourself, so you have to be in the psych ward for S. I, for me, it was two weeks till they can prove you're no longer a danger to yourself, and then they release you. But while you're in the psych ward, and when I was in jail, the same thing as being on lockdown now. The hardest part of it is not knowing how long you're going to be there. How long is it going to be like this? How long until you have your freedom again? And that's that's the um, like the main similarity I think between the quarantine and my lockdown and those lockdowns is not having that um, end date in sight, like not knowing how long is this going to go on. Um, during the times that I was in there, I found it was most beneficial not to focus on how long I have to be in there, which in which seemed like it could go on forever if you play it out in your head like you could make yourself crazy doing that sort of thing. So instead, I found it was most beneficial just to stay within the day, stay within the minute, stay within the hour, stay 
Also staying busy helped a lot because then I was able, I will say the two things that helped the most is keeping my mind busy or keeping my body busy. So I'm using those same two tactics during this quarantine and then I'm adding on extra things because unlike being in jail, unlike being in the psych ward, unlike uh, being in rehab, we have free reign, you know, we are at home, we're in our own home, we have all of our luxuries, we have the internet, you know, we have our, our soft cushy beds, we have the food that we want to eat, we can go to the grocery store, we can get the foods that we love. Um, so it's the same to a certain degree. It's a lot different. Like this lockdown is really not that bad when you think about it. Um, I really feel for the people that are actually locked down, that are actually in prison, that are actually in jail, because I know when you're in there, you're basically just treated like an animal. And I could just picture being in there with this virus going on. And it's basically like you're a ticking talk, like waiting until somebody comes in with the virus and then it's just gonna spread like wildfire because when I was in jail, they didn't care anything about our health. Um, you could have your head bashed open and it might take them, they may notice, they may not, you know? They weren't, they weren't concerned with our safety, with our health while we were locked up. We were like animals in a cage and they were just like the zookeepers is essentially how it was. So, um, yeah, that's another thing I focus on. I pray, I pray so much. I'm praying prayers for those that have the virus. I'm praying for healing. I'm praying for like the knowledge to know what to do next. I'm praying to, to know like, how could I, what could I do to help if anything, if staying home is the most helpful thing, then of course, yes, I'll do that. Um, but just, I'm praying a lot and I'm praying and I'm also staying in a state, and I prayed a lot when I was in jail and I prayed a lot when I was in the psych ward and I'm praying a lot now. So that's always been like something that helps calm me down. It helps like recenter me and focus me and it helps bring things into perspective. Like it's okay, I'm not in charge. All I need to do is do my part but it's ultimately not up to me what's going to happen with this and it's not on me what's going to happen what i need to focus on is how can i make the how can i make the most of this while i'm in this and so one of the things i'll share here a little email i got from i think it was joanne's so i'm going to try to do this and i would encourage anybody else that knows how to sew if you want to hop on um I guess you can go pick up this packet and it'll like teach us how to make masks and I still don't really know how to sew, I'm learning how to sew, but I feel like if I get the instructions I'll be able to basically be able to start making these masks and then that will give me a new purpose also while I'm on lockdown, like something that I can do to be helping other people. I have cotton, I have elastic, I have a sewing machine. So I can use these tools to help make something that can help somebody else during this time. Um, the other thing was like when I was on lockdown, I would also try to tell myself like, this isn't the worst thing. I'm sacrifice like I'm sacrificing now so that tomorrow can be better. And that's what I have to tell myself when I get the urge to just like go somewhere like CVS or the grocery store and pick up something that's like a non-essential I have to tell myself like the other day I ran out of foundation like makeup and I was like it's not an essential like I had the urge that I want to go get it but then on the other end I'm like it's not worth it because what if I'm a carrier and I don't know it and there I am going to Walgreens just to get this makeup that wasn't a necessity to begin with. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep better control of like a need versus a want and be very strict with myself. I feel like that is another way I can do my part. And so it's like, I would have to tell myself that a lot when I was in treatment, when I was in rehab, it was like, felt like torture a lot of the time. I would just tell myself, I'm sacrificing now, I'm following all these rules, I'm going through all these directions, I'm, I'm going to all these meetings, I'm doing all these things that I don't enjoy that I would never pick to do, but I'm doing it now and I'm suffering now with an open mind and an open heart 
in, in hopes that this is going to be the change I need so tomorrow can be better, so tomorrow I can be better for my family, so tomorrow I can start to become a better person, I can start to heal, I can start have something to offer people. And so in the quarantine, it's like I have to tell myself I'm sacrificing now the freedoms and the luxuries to go out and you know go to the gym and go get anything at the drop of, at the drop of a hat like whatever you need or want and i'm sacrificing that so that we can be so that we can get through this pandemic hopefully sooner than later and um and so that really helps a lot i'll sh i'll share some of the things that we've been doing during our quarantine uh keeping our bodies busy so We've been doing about an hour's worth of outdoor exercise, whether it's in the backyard or we go to this park where we have like this um, field where there's nobody in it and we can just get out and play soccer and I can walk Bella and Nico and me can kick the ball around. So we also do it in the backyard. Um, the other day I got the TRX out and I did a at home workout, which I thought was really fun. and. I, am, I love lifting weights, but I'm the type of person that I get my best workouts at the gym and it's because I'm like leaving the house, it's like an escape. So I'm finding that working out like inside the house isn't really, I can do it, it's not really that enjoyable, I'll just be honest with you, I just feel kind of clustered. So getting outside to do a workout, getting outside for fresh air has been like a huge benefit to like for fighting off my depression, so overall mental health, all that good stuff. Um, I've also been keeping busy with trying trying to teach myself how to sew and trying to basically like I'm looking up tutorials online and I'm trying to figure out how to do just like simple projects. So I'll just type in like upcycle jeans. I'll just I'll like pick something that I have and all that I already have here that I've thrifted like upcycle a pair of jeans and then I see like what comes up and then that leads me down like a whole rabbit hole so um and I understand not everybody has the internet I feel like the vast majority do and then people obviously that are watching are on YouTube so I'm speaking to you because you're already now and obviously like you're on YouTube you have the internet so a lot of these are like internet based things that I'm doing so just like when I was in treatment they had us on like a strict schedule see I'm finding in quarantine it's good to have like a schedule have like cornerstones of things to include in each day like home cooked meals um, going out for our exercise also like time I'm dedicating time to YouTube I'm dedicating time to my business like taking the time to sit down and plan things for my business that otherwise it's like I was always too busy to do so I'm wanting to learn how to make some things on my own so that I can add like my own style to my stores I'm wanting to kind of revamp my inventory all together so I'm looking into wholesale I'm looking into different ways to get inventory because I know ultimately like I love thrifting but I want to eventually grow and so I'm trying to sort of plan like long term while I have this extra time on my hands. So I would encourage you if you have any sort of like long term goals, long term hobbies, things that it seems like they're too daunting, you never have the time to sit down and do them, like if you ever wanted to take up a certain hobby like this will be the perfect time to do it especially things that don't involve like try not to focus on things that involve a lot of stuff that you don't have try to like go through your house I've been going through our house and just like making making each area like my office I go through and I kind of see what I have in there and I can kind of get lost in like each room inside my house for a whole day and like go through my office and kind of see like what kind of crafts things do I have in here that I've never actually used like I have a lot of things that I could be making hair accessories I have a lot of thrifted clothes that I could be upcycling so I'm starting to tackle all that stuff and take it on now that I have the time I'm also using the time to 
like have family game nights with my son and my husband because I feel like we don't really make enough time to do that. We would do it, but I feel like now we have even more of an opportunity to do that. And my son just lights up whenever we're like, oh, let's do a family game night. It just like makes his whole day. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like these little light bulb moments are going off. Like even when I'm off quarantine, I'm going to keep on some of these new habits that I'm building now because I can see like I was getting a little too fast paced and being busy isn't necessarily the same thing as being productive. Um, I'm just saying I want to have more of a, uh, I want to have more of a balance in my life when I go back. I wrote down a little list so that I can just kind of keep this on track. Now, don't, <laughs> you're going to want to make fun of me on this one, but seriously though, when I was in the psych ward, they had us do like these guided meditations and I think we did them in treatment too. Like you close your eyes and they play this tape and the person is like describing like where you're going and you have your eyes closed and they're like walking you through. It's called a guided meditation. It is very relaxing and I'm telling you this, I was like wired up when I was in the psych ward. I was wired up when I was in treatment and I've... I found these things relaxing. Another thing that was important while I was on these lockdowns was finding the time to socialize with people. Even me being like, not necessarily like a people person, but I was always pretty standoffish, but at the same time, I needed to be with people connected in some way. So in a way I'm reaching out here via YouTube, in a way I've reached out via FaceTime or phone, like, you know, just over the phone calling people, m making the time to check in on your family, on your loved ones, even you can't be there in person. Or I like this idea, some, some kids have the idea of like, you meet up somewhere, but you like park in a parking lot and you park here and they park a few like stalls, they park a few parking spaces down and then your other person that you're meeting up with parks a few parking spaces over there and then you can all just hop on the back of your car and kind of hang out and talk. I love that idea. Like you're not, you're not being, and it's not like a huge group because you'd be like five people. You all drive separate. You all meet up in a parking lot and you just park in your designated areas. And that was sort of reminded me of like when I was in treatment, it was, it was basically smoke breaks. We would go out for cigarette breaks and it was just that camaraderie of, you know, you're telling, you're just being goofy, you're telling jokes, you're telling stories, and you're just having a little five, 10 minute break together. And that can be in the form of a phone call, in the form of FaceTime, in the form of meeting up with somebody, but keeping that distance, but actually still seeing them. Um, that is really important because I feel like having that connection with people, even in small doses, can really boost you up. Yeah, so like in jail when you had a visitor and when I had a visitor and I was in jail that was like the best <laughs> the best that was like the best day ever if you had a visitor and you were locked up that was like the best the best day ever you're like somebody actually came to see me what <laughs> another thing you could do is take the time to learn something that you wanted to learn but you've never sat down to take the time um, like I mentioned, I was doing sewing, but I'm also trying to learn um, like more about editing. Um, I like editing videos, and so I'm kind of like playing around with editing on TikTok. I'll include a few, if I can include a few of my like TikTok upcycles, I'll include them here. Um, I'll just cover over the music with something else so I don't get a copyright. You can take time to plan your meals out. This is something I've been doing regularly for quite some time, but when I started planning my meals out, I plan in one week increments because when I did two weeks, a lot of the fresh ingredients would go bad, but you could practice like planning out a week's worth of meals if you're not already doing that because you might be surprised it's actually not as hard as you might think it is and then once you get in the groove of doing that like our grocery bill has gone down drastically since before we would just like go there kind of aimlessly like we'd have a list but we didn't have meals planned out since our meals are planned out it makes it so much easier and then you get a week's worth of groceries and you don't even have to worry about going back for at least a week and then or until you just run out of something Another thing that helps pass the time is if you just make something, creating, 
creating. All people have the power to be creative. There's people who say, I'm not creative. I can't make anything. But that's not true. Anybody can make something. You just have to take the time to sit down and do it, whether it's you're going to write, you know, write a few paragraphs, write down one of your favorite memories, write something that you're grateful for. Anybody can write. That is to create. You could film videos, film silly videos, get on TikTok. You could, um, you could make a new recipe. You could make a new dessert, treat yourself to a little dessert. Um, you could, you could do an artistic type thing. If you're into art, you could make, you can take photos. That's creating something, just getting creative in any sort of way. Like it, it does have like this uplifting, um, it really uplifts your spirit. I feel like it does me and it does so many other people. So I think that's worth noting. And so, yeah, I think that, uh, going on virtual escapes, if there's any, like you want to read an audiobook instead of going to the library, I'll just go on like the online library and pick something out or just going to rent a movie. I don't typically sit down and watch a lot of movies, but it's a perfect time to watch movies. It's like, just try to enjoy some part of the lockdown. Try to make some of it enjoyable. Try not to stress so much about the seriousness of like the cons. Yes, we are in a pandemic. It's a very serious situation, but if you try to um, make parts of it more enjoyable, uh, it will help it go by faster. Like when I was in treatment, I knew it was serious. Like I knew I had a life threatening illness and um, but it didn't mean that I couldn't joke around and have some fun while I was in there. It took me a while to get to that point, but once I got to that point, it made it go by so much better because it was like, okay, I was able to enjoy parts of my day and I wasn't just, you know, like sitting in my head the whole time thinking of like all this shit. It was like, I was able to just kind of cut loose a little bit and um, create some stuff, write, pray, journal, um, exercise, all these things just, they help so much. Um, and sometimes it's best not to over, sometimes it's best when in these types of situations to not sit down for too long and overthink things. But I find it better to keep myself busy, keep myself occupied. And in a, in a way it's great that my son's out of school because that is keeping me plenty busy. I'm sure other parents can relate. Um, but yeah, just hang in there. I hope, um, I'll pop up the homework, I'll pop up the TRX workout now if you want to see what that looks like. Some of these look really easy, but they're actually really hard for me because I weigh a lot and it's body weight suspended. Anybody could 
you could probably just strap a, a rope around your tree and do two little makeshift handles and boom you have a TRX. That's actually a really hard that's actually really hard. It's called suspension training, but it looks easy, but it's actually like a total body workout and what the TRX is basically just like these nylon cords with handles on the end. So if you had like a sturdy rope, you could basically make a TRX and do something like that in your backyard. And it just kind of mixes things up, even though we might be doing the same things every day, just mixing up the order, something as simple as that can just make it seem that much more refreshing. So anyway, I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're not taking yourself serious 100% of the time, even though it is a serious situation. Um, I hope you're finding ways um, to make the most of this time that we have right now and hopefully we will be back to our <laughs> hopefully we will be back to our regular scheduled lives sooner than later so basically yeah i just wanted to show up and share some of this what we've been doing and i'd be curious to know what you're doing and i hope you all are making the most of your time and i hope you're staying positive okay so i'm gonna wrap it up there thank you so much for watching until next week stay strong stay grateful and stay positive <laughs>